All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another great edition of the Frankie Slauson Show right here on K-Tech and uh, also available on YouTube.com as well. Well, tonight, as you guys were aware, uh, we have uh, been doing a thing called uh, John Barry Appreciation Night. And, uh, and as a rare treat, I got the man, the living legend, on the phone. And uh, if you guys don't remember John Barry, well, shame on you. Where were you in the 90s when he became a really big star? <laughs> but I have, uh, Mr. John, I have Mr. John Barry with me on the phone, and uh, how's it going, Mr. Barry? Going great. How about yourself? Oh, I'm doing doing great. And, uh, you know, this is a rare treat uh, to have you on. Uh, I've always been a big fan of your music uh, on a personal level, and uh, I just think it's cool that uh, that you said yes to this. Well, good to be, really good to be with you. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you, uh, we were talking. Uh, you're, you're currently on tour right now. Yeah, we're in um, Virginia. Uh, we're, we're we were in North Carolina last night. We've got three shows in Virginia, uh, and then Maryland and Ohio before we head home. Wow, it, uh, it's kind of interesting that uh, after all these years, that that music has still been your passion. That you uh, haven't decided to just uh, to to take a break or or find something else to do. Oh no, I love this. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely love it. Well, that, that, that's interesting uh, uh, because uh, you know, I, like I've known your music pretty much since the mid '90s. I was introduced to your the first album I ever owned of yours was your your, your classic album called Faces, and uh, that really uh, that was that was a pretty good album. I, I've been I've, I actually listened to it yesterday just to kind of rekindle. Uh, because of the fact that we were doing this interview, it's uh, uh, it's uh, one of my favorite albums that you've done. Oh, thank you. Yeah, there's some songs on it. She's taking a shine and changed my mind. Oh, I love changed my mind. That's a beautiful, beautiful song. Yeah, and and, and uh, with uh, with you uh, uh, doing albums and stuff, uh, what like how did the the love for music kind of start for you? Well, I grew up in a real musical house. My my mom loved Christian music and gospel music and my dad loved to listen to classical and Van, he loved to hear Van Clyburn play the piano and and um, just a lot of great music in our house growing up and um, my sister she just listened to a lot of popular music of the day my brother Scott ended up becoming a cellist and an opera singer he loved classical music and and, uh, and of course I, I I just sort of did what I did <laughs> <laughs> you always kind of liked the country music never Never got into like rock and roll or anything like that. Even though some of your music can be considered uh, some of your early stuff, anyway, more like a rock country or country rock. Well, I grew up in the seventies, listening to the Eagles and Jackson Brown and Kenny Loggins. You know, a lot of you know Jackson Brown or the Eagles came out today. They'd probably be on country radio. So yeah, yeah, that, that yeah, you definitely got a good point there because of of their of their style and stuff. You know, uh, with with their music. But that, that's pretty cool, you know, because uh, you know, growing up and liking that stuff, uh, were, were, were they like big idols to you, or did you have other people that you uh, were influenced by to get you get you started anyway? Well, I started playing guitar in '72, and there were just a gazillion just of uh, singer songwriters like Cat Stevens, Harry Chapin, and James Taylor, uh, John Denver, of course, being my favorite. Um, just a lot of great singer songwriters out there doing just some really cool music. I was just really drawn to that kind of stuff, and uh, that's probably my biggest thing, musical influence. That and some of the soul music, you know, some of the oh. these uh, soul groups when they from Philadelphia here, what they call the Philly soul sound, like the Shy Lights and the Stylistics. That's where my little R and B influence comes from. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because you know, I I see a lot of that in, in, in the music that you do. Like like I like a lot of your especially a lot of your older stuff and then even what you do now I see a lot of like influence like by even a little bit of Roy Orbison in your music because of the because uh, of how how good you can sing like a you know like an almost like an opera like song even though most of the stuff that you have done is not opera but even like what Roy Orbison did you know not his stuff was opera but he could he could sing it uh, he could keep a note pretty well and I think that's uh, what works for you too kind of do you see that a uh, similarity in that kind of or, or am I totally off no, that's pretty accurate. Uh, but I, I just, you know, like I said, I just really grew up listening to just so many different kinds of music and just a real eclectic background. So 
and it ends up showing, I think, in what I do. Yeah. Oh, it definitely does. Uh, uh, when you, uh, when you uh, finally uh, decided that you wanted to do uh, country music as your as your genre of, uh, of music, uh, as far as what it, what you're doing even right now, uh, how did you... Uh, how did you kind of get noticed? Like, what was the first uh, radio station to play your songs or even the first uh, uh, record label to kind of get you started? Uh, well, in 1986, I was I was just beginning to work on um, my fifth independent record. I did six independent records before I ever got a record deal. Oh. And I was getting ready to start working on a record, um, and... A friend of mine, I was living, I, I still live in the Athens, Georgia area, but a friend of mine from North Carolina called me up and she said, hey, there's a radio station in Charlotte that's having this contest. And uh, she said, it's a country station. She said, I don't know if you'd want to enter it or not. But So I sent in a couple of songs. I sent in one song. I recorded a song called Things That Just Don't Matter Anymore. And I ended up getting into the finals. And then I ended up winning. And... And I was like, wow, this country thing's pretty cool. So I ended, so that record, I went home uh, after we won that thing, and, and actually we, we started writing some songs for this new album after that, and it took a decidedly country turn. And uh, there was one of my favorite songs off that record, a song called uh, uh, Two Steps in Front of a Broken Heart. Just some, just some, some real fun country songs, you know. And, and uh then uh, I cut uh, my last independent record, the record called Saddle of the Wind. And uh, after the name, name came from an old John Wayne movie. And uh, uh, and it's sort of a country, it's a little more rocking than the, the Things That Just Don't Matter Anymore album. And uh, uh, it, it's, uh, and then after that, that was, the last independent record I did was in 1990. And then in 1991, uh, it was actually spring. It was actually late winter of 1992. I was coming home from playing in Athens. I lived about 18 miles out in the country from Athens, sure, sure. and I was coming home late one night after playing at a gig there. And a song came on the radio that I'd never heard before. A song called "Ships That Don't Come In" by Joe Dissy. And for the very first time, it occurred to me that maybe I was as well known as I would ever be. I'd be this really big fish in this very small pond of Athens, Georgia. Because I was playing clubs, I was making a, a, a really good living. Uh, my wife and I had a farm up north of Athens, and built us a house out there. You know, things were good. And uh, but for the first time, it occurred to me that maybe I was, maybe that's all I'd ever do. So went home and woke her up, and I said, "This is the deal. Uh, we got to come up with a plan." You know, we, we either got to say, okay, we're going to stay here and do this forever, or we're going to make the effort to see if we can't get a, a record deal and, and move on with it. And um, um, we, did, we did come up with a plan to go to Nashville and do some industry showcases and see if we could, what kind of interest we could garner. And uh, we uh, did one industry showcase, and out of that, I got a record deal with Capitol Records. Oh yes. And uh, now here we are on the phone. <laughs> wow, that, you know that's that's uh, definitely quite the story. I mean, you know, I'm sure you know you were kind of you know even like you were saying you know just kind of not sure what the future was going to bring for you, and then all of a sudden it's like do or die almost like it's like we're either going to do it or we're not going to do it, and and if your life would have took the other route, I mean. You probably would have been a successful farmer, but uh, I'm, I'm glad that you uh, stuck to your guns and the, because you produce a lot of great music over the years. And it just uh, and the fact that, you, like you said, you you want to keep doing this. I mean, this is uh, this is uh, something special, that's for sure. I sure love doing it. And, and uh, uh, like in the early days when you were playing, like like what was your first major tour that you ever did? When you first started to get noticed, I was on tour opening the show for Reba McIntyre, oh. in front of like a big pretty, sold out crowd. Probably in front of a big sold out crowd. Well, we did. Um, I did the tour with her for uh, two years, oh. almost, almost two years. Oh wow! I got to see a lot of places that you probably never thought you'd ever get to see being on tour. I suppose, huh? 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, we went all over the place. And then I went to Canada with uh, Michelle Wright, who's a Canadian artist. And uh, she's wonderful. And uh, she's very well known in Canada. And I opened her show. And uh, we did 43 cities across Canada. I didn't know there were 43 cities in Canada. <laughs> yeah, who knew, huh? <laughs> yeah, eh? Yeah, eh? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, what's kind of funny when you mentioned that, you know, I'm originally from northern Minnesota. That's a, that's where I was kind of born and raised. And and, and uh, kind of a funny story real quick that I'll tell you how I how I discovered your music in the first place. Uh this this is based on a true story that uh, that happened uh, during one of your concerts when you came to I believe it was the Shooting Star Casino in Monoma, Minnesota, back in like '96 or '97 or somewhere around there. I'm, I'm sure you barely remember this, but there's a teacher that I had. Uh, I grew up in, in northern Minnesota. Uh, went to school in a town called Middle River, Minnesota. Her, her uh, the teacher's name was Dina Pink. Uh, now she's married and she's uh, Dina Lawrence now. But she said that uh, she was always moved by your music. That's how I discovered you. She met you. I think she told you a story or something that was like something, you know, a true story about something <clears throat> when you guys met. And, uh, you know, it just, it, it, you know, the fact that you were so interested in her story and everything that, you know, most, most celebrities would be like, I don't have time for this, you know. Uh, you want an autograph or get out of my face, blah, blah, blah. But the fact that you were so passionate about you know, what she was telling you, and you got a picture and everything with her and stuff, she she was so motivated by your music that majority of the time while we were in math class, while we we're like you know taking a test or, or or whatever, she'd play your she'd play your music. She'd play your either your Faces album or your uh, I think your uh, not somebody gave all album. It's some other there's another album that you did too that uh, before that, but your Faces yeah. album I remember. And uh, I don't know. I just thought it was just kind of an interesting story. That's how I got introduced to the whole John Barry experience. And, and, and I That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I know you probably don't remember because you've been all over the world and it's been such a long time. But but that's what I remember from how I got how I heard of you because she kept on talking about you because you were like one of her her favorite artists of all time, you know. And it just. Uh, uh, so it's kind of you can only imagine, you know, even for me, to, it's kind of just cool to be able to talk to you right that is now. Cool. Yeah. So I mean, uh, it's funny how music can influence people. Uh, ha- have you ever uh, been uh, influenced by a lot of other people's songs that uh, kind of moved you that you wanted to do as part of your show or anything like that? Like, well, there's the a few songs that I do. Um, Songs that really meant a lot to me growing up that I've always enjoyed. I, I still do Heart of Gold by Neil Young. Yeah. And uh, I've been playing that song for ever since it came out in the early 70s. And I also do John Denver's Annie song. I, I, I love John Denver's music a lot. Uh, probably my biggest musical influence was John Denver. So. Did you ever get to meet him at all when he was alive? I did. I did. I sure did. And that was pretty moving. Really. About, about eight months before he passed away. Jeez. Playing that. Yeah, yeah. That was so weird, huh? I mean, maybe it was like fate, or like something that you had to do before even before even knowing that tragedy was going to strike. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah. but yeah, I mean, it's it, uh, it's pretty it's pretty exciting though. Uh, uh, the one thing that I always liked, you know, that you know, you, I'm sure you talked about many many times, but I'm going to bring it up. Is your cover of Oh Holy Night, uh, the Christmas classic that you know everybody loves throughout the year or uh, Christmas time? Uh, that was a, a definitely a, a moving uh, version of that song because I've heard many versions of that song, but uh, the way you did it, I guess it really blew up, so to speak, for you. Oh. Yeah, it's, uh, it's it's been a a real blessing that song has for us, for me, for my career. Um, I, I don't know what I, I don't know exactly what there is about it that has really struck a chord with people. It's one of those kind of things that it's not tangible. You can't you just can't put your finger on it. Yeah. And you know, but it just uh, it, it's been one of those songs. It's just you know it's just transcended. You know. Sure. Hard to it's just one of those songs that's hard to explain how it all happened. It just it just happened. <laughs> Yeah, the original recording of that 
I actually did on May the 8th of 1994. Um, I'm sorry, June, June 8th of 1994. Okay. The significance of that is, is that uh, on May 10th of 1994, I had brain surgery. Huh. And so to be in a recording studio recording a song that meant so much to me, it was a real emotional day, obviously. Yeah, I would say Jeez, brain surgery just uh, and a month later you're in their studio. Wow, that's pretty. Pa- yeah. that's, that's pretty powerful. I mean, <laughs> what do you really yeah, think it about was it? Pretty incredible. Huh? Yeah, that's uh, that is incredible. Uh, uh, because most uh, most time doesn't it take like a while to recover from brain surgery, like a few months or whatever. But not not well, that quick. It's not not so much. I mean, it's, it, it's one of the few surgeries that you're actually awake for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, because they're talking to you to make sure, because, you know, the brain's a weird deal, and, you know, I think they're still trying to figure it out. Did did you uh, have, like, a, a tumor or something that you need surgery or something? Or? In the third ventricle. Oh. And uh, it was causing a backup of fluid in on my brain and and uh, turned me into somebody else. Oh, yeah, I suppose. Caused, caused a complete loss of appetite and continual headaches and and uh i just turned into somebody else so no passion for the music business for that that time of your life i'm sure until you've got no mad. passion no passion for anything Jeez. just wanted just wanted some advil to make the headache go away oh wow so, and that went on for months months and months so so it started in january and the surgery was april 20 uh, no may 10th so huh so that well, was pretty and nobody, you know, we went months and months without anybody knowing what it was. I was just turning into somebody really dark. <laughs> oh, jeez, I can't, I can't imagine so. a dark John Barry. You know, that's just, I'm sorry, that's just too, that's just too hard <laughs> to imagine. You're, every time I see you, like in concert or anything, or even your music videos and stuff, you always, you know, have a smile on your face. You're always a happy, happy-go-lucky guy. I can't picture you having a dark moment. I mean, we all have dark yeah. moments in our life, but you know. It's yeah. it's a whole power of God thing, you know. I mean, and you're there you go. you're a very faithful guy, and and uh, I, you know, God was looking out for you that day, and he, he wanted to make that's make it. you better. So that's uh, that's what happened. Yeah. <laughs> but you got any uh, any new stuff coming out that uh, you can talk about? I'm sorry, I lost it there. Uh, do you have any uh, anything you like to promote, or a new stuff that you're coming out with that you can talk about at all? Well, we're going to start on a new record here. A um, couple of months that'll be out by Christmas tour, and uh, we do our annual Christmas tour each year, of course. And this upcoming season will be our 18th year. Wow! And uh, we've got that going on. And we also, if people go to my website, johnberry dot com, um, there are um, years ago I went out and did a tour for well, it was just a run of shows, sort of like ten shows over two weeks, and it was just me and our piano player and my wife Robin. And it turned into the Songs and Stories show. Oh. And that lasted 22 months and became a two-disc set. Oh. Well, recently, my wife, Robin, took those stories and wrote them all out. And then we expanded on them a little bit, and we put them into a book called Songs and Stories. And there's like a, like for the read, like there's a story by, behind why, how I came up and wrote the song, Standing on the Edge of Goodbye. And um, there's a, the story behind that, and then there's the lyrics to the song, and then there for that for that particular story, there's some pictures, a photograph of the Grammy nomination, and just some different things like that, and um, and then in the back of the book, there's a CD of the ten songs that go with the ten stories, okay. and uh, so it's, it's, it's a neat neat piece. Yeah, it sounds like a neat piece. Do you have any? Yeah, uh... close to do you have any uh, Blu-rays or DVDs out that people can buy if they want to check you out? Yeah, there's, there's a, a live in Kalamazoo um, at the State Theater in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Okay. And uh, there's a Christmas live at the State and uh, Hits live at the State. And then there's also a DVD of all of the uh, uh, videos that I did when I was at Capitol Records over the year, videos for uh, Standing on the Edge, Goodbye, Your Love Amazes Me, Kiss Me in the Car, Change My Mind. <laughs> oh, Holy Night, I think, is on there. 
during the during the good old days of CMT when CMT used to be just a twenty four hour uh, country music channel. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, John, all country all the time. Yes, yes. Uh, besides now, where they they show other things now that aren't country related. Well, they show Hogan knows yeah. best, and that's not that's not country related. Hulk Hogan on country music <laughs> television. Yeah, but uh, I I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, John, this has been a rare treat. This has been fun. Uh, that's why we're having a special on, on this episode of my radio show that uh, you'll hear on Friday night. Uh, we're, we're calling it John Barry Appreciation Night, just because you're nice enough to let me do an interview with you. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. That's awfully nice of you. Thank you. Yeah, so we're going to play a bunch of your, your bunch of your hits as well as a few deep, deep tracks as well. Is there any song that you recommend that you uh, would love for us to play during this Appreciation oh. Night? Uh, there's a song that's on... I think it's on my first album. It's got Your Love Amazes Me on it. Okay. A song called More Sorry Than You'll Ever Know. Okay. That I that I think is just a really beautiful song. Uh, there's a and, and, and so if you want to you know, look for a deep track, there's there's there you go. Okay. And there's also one. Do you know, Tracy Berg, uh, a Tracy, the writer. Tr- Tracy Bird or Tracy. Ma Tracy Berg. Oh no, no, I don't know who that is. She's. She's written a bunch of hits for, you know, Winona and and uh, 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 oh gosh, her name's going right out of my head. Uh, Trisha Yearwood. Okay. And uh, she's a wonderful writer. And she wrote an album. Or she wrote a song that's on uh, a Standing on the Edge album. Okay. It's called like it's uh, oh gosh, what's the name of that song? It's awesome. I almost said a different title. That's from a different <laughs> another another song. But anyway, there's, there's just there's some deep cuts on there. So a couple of those records. There's just sure. some of these real heartfelt. Well, it's driving and crying songs. I call them. Well, yeah, because I mean, you got so much. You got a you got a enough songs where you could make yourself you know have give yourself a box set if you really wanted to. You know, with all the songs oh, yeah. you got out. <laughs> I'm surprised you have it. Well, <laughs> Well, with 24 albums, yeah, yeah. I, I could do a box set. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if George Strait can do a box set, you know, and if Hank Williams Jr. can, I think John Barry can too. Yeah. Yeah, well, I think they're a little more famous than I am, y'all. <laughs> a lot of your listeners are going, John Barry, who is that guy? <laughs> Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure some people will remember. I I would hope somebody would remember because you know you were such a bit. You were so big in the nineties. I mean, you, you know, with the music videos, kind of maybe thanks to CMT and whatnot. But uh, you know, I mean, it, it was just something that happened. And then we'd, we'd see you on the music uh, on the uh, on the music shows and stuff. And uh, you know, it, you know, I'm sure it was an excellent feeling to to feel like the king of the world for a while. You know. Yeah, boy. <laughs> But anyway, oh, no, uh, well, I sure appreciate it. Well, I do too. Uh, uh, thanks again. And uh, do you have any uh, any words to your fans before uh, we let you go? Well, I sure appreciate them listening, and and uh, hope they'll keep keep looking out for what we're doing. Always, uh, you, if, when in doubt, johnberry dot com. All right, man. God sure. bless you, and uh, thanks again for letting me do this interview with you. I really appreciate you it. You bet, pal. Thank thank you so much. All right. Take care. Bye. All right, and that was the legendary and very, very iconic John Barry, country music superstar John Barry. Uh, not to be confused with there's a John Barry that does like instrumental music, I think, too, or something like that for for scores or for movies or whatever. But I this is uh, <laughs> I mean this was kind of a surprise because this is you know this is the funny story of how this interview kind of happened. I sent him a, a, an interview request, you know. A few days ago, uh, of course, this is uh, recorded. This is March twenty second. So uh, when I, we air this, uh, I don't know the exact date. But when anyway, uh, I record. Uh, I sent him an interview request. Didn't think that he would respond back because it's like, who am I, right? You know, I mean, who cares if I have a radio show, right? So, <laughs> I should be more, a little bit more proud of myself than I am. Yeah, but anyway, and then he responds back. He gives me his email address to get a hold of me. He gives me his phone number. I'm just like, wow. So, hey, some stranger things have happened, but I really, really appreciate the fact that he took the time. And if you do listen to this interview, John, uh, it really means a lot to me. I don't know how much it means to the listeners out there, but it really means a lot to me because you, you know, you're still a star in my mind. And, uh, you know, I hope uh, I hope uh, we see more stuff come from you here uh, eventually like you're talking about. So, anyway, 
we'll uh, have more uh, on this John Barry appreciation night with my, my with myself, Frank Slauson, and my good old co-host, Old Reb. Uh, we'll be right back on K Tech at ninety one point three FM. <laughs> <laughs> 